the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Center for Clinical Standards and Quality, brings you CMS QI Voices, an audio series that gives you a closer look at the projects and people who are improving healthcare quality and outcomes. These brief conversations include detailed show notes for even more insights into the process behind healthcare quality improvement and how you might adapt these to your own organization. In this series, CMS explores how nursing homes and Quality Innovation Network quality improvement organizations have worked together to tackle challenges related to COVID-19 vaccination, infection control, and the use of therapeutics to improve resident outcomes. Let's listen in. Welcome to CMS QI Voices, Improving COVID-19 Outcomes in America's Nursing Homes. I'm Dr. Paul Rosen, Medical Officer for the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Today, I'm joined by Deb Smith, Consulting Manager at Health Quality Innovators, HQI. Deb has more than 25 years of experience as an infection preventionist and a registered nurse. Under her leadership, Nursing homes have reduced healthcare associated infections, implemented antimicrobial stewardship programs, and enhanced their patient safety programs. In today's episode, we will be highlighting best practices for cohorting and COVID 19 infection control. Welcome, Deb, and thanks so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really happy to be here. Deb, as an infection prevention subject matter expert, What basic infection prevention interventions and practices should nursing homes have in place for responding to public health emergencies like COVID-19? Nursing homes place their COVID-positive patients on both contact and a modified droplet precaution, where they used face shields and masking for respiratory protection, and they gowned and gloved for contact protection. With these practices solidly in place, Cohorting residents with the same infectious disease, such as COVID-19, can be accomplished in a more timely manner. Cohorting is the grouping of residents with the same condition in the same location, like a room or a wing or a building, that's separated from the residents who do not have the same condition or haven't been exposed to that condition. The goal of cohorting is to minimize interaction of infectious residents from non-infected residents as much as possible. I want to reinforce, though, that when residents are cohorted, even with the same infectious disease, the staff must be meticulous with following proper hand hygiene and PPE use between the care of each of those cohorted residents. Deb, how have these infection prevention practices been adapted by nursing homes? for isolation and cohorting residents during COVID-19? Well, at the height of the pandemic, when transmission and mortality rates were high, nursing homes identified dedicated areas in their facilities designed to separate the COVID-positive residents from the well-resident population. And this was accomplished through constructing barriers in dedicated units, wings, or floors of the facility for just the COVID-positive patients. These quote unquote hot zones had dedicated staff who performed most of the nursing and support activities for these residents. This staff entered and exited the facility through a dedicated entrance, so they were never in contact with the non COVID residents or staff in the facility. Dedicated resident care equipment was used in these areas and it stayed within the hot zone. Currently, with the decreasing transmission rates of COVID and the lifting of the CMS waiver allowing the use of temporary barriers, most nursing homes have removed the barriers for the dedicated hot zones. However, they're still practicing cohorting and isolation in place for residents who develop COVID symptoms or test positive for COVID. The first choice is always to have a private room for these patients, but when that's not possible, cohorting residents with like illnesses or symptoms is acceptable. Thanks so much, Deb. And how do nursing homes identify residents who need to be cohorted? They are identified through admission screening and testing. They're also identified through daily assessment for symptom development. Even the regional and national data is showing some improvement in transmission rates, 
nursing homes still remain vigilant and continue to assess and screen their residents and their staff for COVID. HQI has several resources that we've developed in response to requests from the nursing homes that help them assess, identify, and address cohorting. Anytime they have a question about a specific circumstance, they can reach out to an HQI quality improvement advisor assigned to them and receive assistance, including recommendations and cited best practices. Thanks, Deb. We heard some good information here about hand hygiene, about using PPE, and about cohorting. Before we uh, close out, could you describe for the audience one take-home message that you would like them uh, to go back to their nursing homes with? Always be aware and prepared for the next emerging infectious disease or newly contagious variant of an existing disease by protecting yourself first through vaccination. It's also important to wear a mask whenever there's a risk of transmission or when you're working with an at-risk population like nursing home residents. Be aware of what's happening in your area. Routinely check your community transmission rate through the COVID tracker on the CDC website. That's updated every Thursday. Prevention is always the best practice, and I think it's well worth the minor inconvenience of a vaccine or a mask. Thanks so much, Deb, for your time and your expertise today and for your work helping nursing homes advance health and safety for their residents in the age of COVID-19. For our listeners, thanks for joining and be sure to join us next time to hear more impactful interventions for increasing vaccination rates and reducing mortality in nursing homes. To learn more about today's episode and to access all of the CMS QI Voices audio series and show notes, please visit qioprogram.org slash CMS QI Voices. Thank you for listening to CMS QI Voices.